I'm going to show you how I built this steady rest to help with turning spindles and in this case a drumstick. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to put it together. This project started with two pieces of walnut you can see I connected here with a lap joint and some glue. And I wanted to make it adjustable and this part of the T that's off to the right here will hold the two roller blade wheels. I have it marked here where I'm going to cut it at an angle and that will allow me to move the wheels up or down. I want to make sure that the wheels are in contact with that spindle at all times. So this way I'll be able to, if it's not quite centered, if I didn't um, measure accurately when I set this jig up, it would give me a little bit of room, wiggle room, to move it up and down and make sure it's in contact with both wheels. So I'm just using my table saw sled here with some clamps to hold that in securely so that I can make these cuts safely. After I got it off the table saw, I did need to use a chisel a little bit to clean it up. But it pretty much, as you can see here, let me move it up or down. Now I figured what I'd just do is secure it on one end with a bolt, and then on the other end I'd have a bolt, washer, and wing nut. And I'm marking out here the semicircle arc I need to drill out and then finish chiseling out so that I have room for the bolt to move back and forth. So I, after I got that drilled out and chiseled out, you can see now I should be able to adjust it. Then I marked it here again, and then I'm going to finish putting that, that bolt, washer, and wing nut in there. You can see loosening the wing nut will allow you to move it up or down to adjust for center on the spindle. And that was the main idea with that adjustment there. Okay, now we're taking it over to the lathe, and when I set it up on the lathe here, you can see that I'm using another wing nut to attach it to the lathe, and underneath that is a three-quarter inch piece of plywood that acts as a plate, and as that turns 90 degrees, it holds it in place. But as you can see here, as I start to use it, I'm having trouble getting it tight, and that's because the bolt that was coming through was spinning on the bottom. So I knew when I put this together, I kind of threw that part together, and I knew it was going to be something I would need to change and fix. So I didn't have any T-nuts at the time. So what I do later is fix that design and change it so it's much easier to adjust. Here's a little bit different angle and you can see how it help, definitely helps support the middle of the, the drumstick I'm turning here. But again, um, you can see me having to, to turn that wing nut trying to keep it tight because I was having a little bit of issues with that. So here, the next part, I'm figuring out the um, dimensions of the new plate I'm going to make the new plate wider. That was one issue I had. It wasn't quite wide enough. And I want to make this so it barely fits in. And then here it is not spun 90 degrees. It'll, I'll turn it underneath that lathe bed. And then it'll be able to lock it in position. So I'm just going to be cutting that on the bandsaw here. So this bandsaw I'm going to be using here. This is a, a Craftsman bandsaw that I picked up. It's uh, made by Emerson, I believe. And from around 1969, 1970. And it has a nice cast iron table on the top. It is a 12 inch bandsaw and it has an aluminum body as opposed to a cast iron body. When I first got it, it was a little flimsy on the stand. It has a sheet metal stand. So once I beefed that up a little bit with some particle board that I had, some shelving, it uh, really turned into a, a pretty nice tool. And I picked it up only for $75 off Craigslist. So I thought that was a good deal. All right, so now I'm putting together the bottom plate here. And for this bottom plate, I'm going to put a T-nut on the bottom, have a bolt coming through the top. And I decided to, instead of the wing nut, which was a kind of a pain to try to, uh, to tighten just with that wing nut and get my fingers in there, I thought I'd try to make a, a handle that would uh, be a little bit easier to adjust out of some leftover walnut that I had. So you can see me putting in the T-nut there. And now I'm going to be working on getting the handle put together. So to get this handle to turn, what I had to do is I had to mark off the head of the bolt with my marking knife. I made a video on that you can check out if you want to see how I made that marking knife from a sawzall blade. And I'm marking off the hex shape and then I just chiseled it out with a quarter inch chisel, slowly going around the circle until it fit. And by taking away a little material at a time. I was eventually able to get it force fit in there so that when I turned turned it, it would turn the whole piece of wood. That's what you're seeing me working on here in this part. So 
So after I got it fixed in there and it was nice and tight, then all I did is mark it on both sides, or marked it on one side rather, make sure it was this, the right length, went over, cut and shaped it on the bandsaw, and then I'm going to take it over to the uh, belt sander and just clean up the edges a little bit, round over the edges a little bit, sand those down. So now I took it back over to the bed of the lathe to see how it fit. Ran into another problem. Now the slot is a little bit too wide for the bolt that I have for this new handle. So instead of using the jigsaw, which I really don't like to use very much, I used my new scroll saw, my new old scroll saw, and that made the job a lot quicker and easier to do, trimming both sides of the slot to fit that new bolt. So here it is all put back into the lathe. It tightens up real easily, no problem, and you can, it seems like I can get a lot more torque on it and set it the way I need to set it. Hey, well here it is, the final version of the Steady Rest. I think it turned out pretty well. I used it then to make some drumsticks, and I'm going to be posting a video coming up on that very soon. So make sure you hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to catch that video. And again, I appreciate you watching. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I'll make sure I answer back to you. Uh, until next time, hey, take care, and uh, get out there and build something. See ya.